Good afternoon. Thank you for the introduction. I'm the Minister in Charge of Women's Empowerment and also the Minister of State for Gender Equality. My name is Katsunobu Kato. I would like to take this opportunity to express my appreciation to the EU delegation to Japan. And the, uh, as I was speaking with the uh, ambassador too, I would like to thank you for uh, organizing this excellent conference on women's participation women's and empowerment and uh, tomorrow uh, we will start this uh, wow uh, world assembly for women uh, which is the uh, uh, the third uh, year uh, that we organize this type of um, conference and um, i would like to take this opportunity once again to express my appreciation for organizing this and inviting me to this conference so um, I'm sorry that we have only the Japanese version of the slides that you will see on, on the screen, but um, I would like to spend the next 25 minutes to talk about the situation of Japan right now and what is our thinking and what is our program and the strategy for the future in order to advance this cause. And um, I hope that we will be able to get inspiration and insights from you too. So uh, please go to the next page. Yes. It's been four years since the Abe administration has started. And four years ago in December, uh, Abe administration was launched. And from that time, one of the key uh, policies is this uh, women's empowerment. And, and three years ago, um, in the uh, uh, UN General Assembly in September, uh, he sent out the message that the Japan was seriously tackling this issue of women's empowerment. As you can see in this slide, more recently, at the he for she reception this year, he stated that the uh, Japanese economic recovery will not be possible without women's empowerment. And the women's empowerment is not just a social policy, but is an economic policy and is one of the main pillars of Abenomics. And the uh, women's empowerment and the diversity will strengthen our society and will lead to economic uh, growth. And that we should create a, a world where uh, it is taken for granted both men and women are, are responsible for both working and also the housework and child care. So why the uh, Abe, uh, Prime Minister Abe is uh, keen on this issue? Of course, uh, it's very important that the uh, uh, you, the uh, w uh, women, uh, can display their full potentials. But at the same time, as you know, uh, we are now experiencing the uh, aging society and the uh, uh, low birth rate, especially the 10 million of uh, working population was dis decreased in the in Japan in the recent, recent decades in order to uh, you utilize more uh, potential of women as workers, it's very important that we put an emphasis on this women's empowerment. There are many women who are not working yet. As you can see on the right-hand side, the blue line indicates the present status. And from the left to right, uh, you will see the, um, uh, the younger women to older women. And the, uh, we still have this, uh, what we call the M uh, letter curve. Uh, there are women uh, who are not in employment right now, but who would like to work. Uh, that is represented in the uh, red line. So between the uh, uh, blue line and the red line indicates a gap between those people who would like to work but cannot work currently. So uh, that indicates the potential uh, job seekers, uh, around 3 million people right now. And these women, may have graduated from university, although they are not working right now, but they were uh, once engaged in, in uh, different types of jobs or had a lot of experience in workplace and in home. And um, and there are now new uh, products and services uh, provided to them. So they will be able to contribute greatly to the future economic growth. According to OECD's survey, 
uh, if the women's labor force participation uh, will be on par with that of men by 2030, the GDP will increase by 20 percent and the Japanese economy it will uh, flourish more. So there are uh, other surveys which indicate uh, to the same effect. And And in 2011, that year, so the Abe administration was born, and in the last four years since then, 26,540,000 uh, people uh, is now, uh, you know, increased to uh, 27 uh, million and 540. Thousand, and this is an employment rate. Uh, this uh, red one for uh, age group of 25 to 44, and the blue one indicates for age group of 15 to 64. The percentage of women has increased uh, four to five percent in the three to four years uh, in the past, and the overall volume uh, is increasing. But not only that, as you can see in this slide. And the percentage of women uh, in the managerial positions in private sector, the uh, red one indicates the uh, subsection head and the percentage of women, and the green one uh, indicates section heads, and the uh, uh, blue one are is departmental heads. Uh, and as you can see, the uh, uh, numbers decrease as the managerial level goes up, but still, overall, the percentage is increasing. and. And you will see at the bottom on, and what it says basically is that the Prime Minister Abe um, directly uh, talked to the uh, uh, leaders in the private sectors on two different occasions. And the first one was April 2013 and asked the um, uh, the companies to employ, uh, to take up at least one woman in the uh, executive officers. And in June 2014, he asked the private company to set targets for um, the um, incorporating more women in the managerial position and also asked them to disclose such information. And also last year in March, starting March uh, last year, uh, the annual, in the annual securities report, the, um, the uh, percentage of women and in the managerial positions uh, must be disclosed. So in, in 2012, in July, 630 uh, has now increased to um, uh, 13, uh, one, hmm? yes, uh, uh, 1,388. So uh, it's more than double, but still, we still have to make a lot of efforts in order to achieve the goal. And in this next slide, you all know this. Uh, this is the um, numbers uh, by the Credit Suisse. And the, uh, this is a comparison between the companies who have um, women in their boards and those who do not have women. And the uh, blue one indicates companies that, that do not have any women in the board. And as you can see, the uh, performance of the companies are higher uh, for those companies who have at least one woman in the board. And, and for young women uh, who are, will uh, go into the uh, labor market, uh, you know, this makes a lot of difference. And about 10 years ago, uh, this is a comparison between now and about 10 years ago. Uh, Left-hand side is 10 years ago, and the right-hand side is now. And most you, you will see the positive result, but uh, the exception is the CEO. 6.2% has now decreased to 2.8%. But for other managerial positions, uh, there are more women now. According to the uh, private sector's um, survey, uh, this was clearly shown so clearly by implementing these activities and um, as we have more uh, women working on in the leadership positions in the companies, the young women would also think that the, uh, it's not 
you know, just to be able to work in the company, but uh, they can also inspire to become a leader in the company. And the overall, uh, the percentage of such women is also increasing. So there is now a big movement occurring in Japan, I would say. So by taking this kind of conference and the WOW, which will start tomorrow, uh, it's important that we address this issue on, on different occasions in different symposia uh, which are held in Tokyo. Now it's converging into one uh, clear sign of movement. I refer to the uh, what we call the M letter curve. In case of Japan, in the past, uh, you know, women uh, would uh, get married and then quit job and leave the company, but it is no longer so. But when they have the first child, uh, you know, there are many women who leave the company when they have the first child. The blue part at the bottom, bottom and the brown and the green, uh, these uh, women were working uh, until uh, they have the first child. And the green part uh, indicates the women who had to leave the company because of uh, having a child. So blue one and brown one and green ones, uh, if uh, these three comprise 100%, and when you compare that with other uh, clusters from 1985, it's around 40%, more or less. So when the first child uh, is born, the uh, four out of 10 people remain, but the uh, six people will would leave the company. And this has been a trend. However, in the recent uh, survey, the percentage of women who would quit, I'm sorry, the percentage of women who continue to work uh, which used to be 40%, but now it has risen to 53%. So this is clearly this blue part the, at the bottom. Uh, it's the uh, percentage of uh, women uh, and people who would use the uh, uh, you know, parental leave. So that means that the, uh, uh, this uh, parental leave system uh, has been more widely recognized and used. And another factor is that the after they return to the workforce, and now they can work less hours so that they can take care of the, their children. So in the past, women would think that they, they would quit, quit the job because uh, they have the first child. But now uh, it's different that yeah, they can continue to work even after uh, having a child. And another point. The, those people who quit because they had a child, but you, you know, in five years, in ten years, when their child uh, goes to primary school, then you know uh, they would have to, they would want to work again. So it's important that we create an environment where they can work full time uh, if they wish to do so. And also the recurrent education, which um, has been now uh, being taught in different universities, that uh, they can get the skills training in the computers and so forth in order to close the gap. And also the uh, so that they can gain the skills of interviews and so forth for the job interviews, and also collect the information about the uh, possible jobs offerings. And this is the kind of activities that would like to accelerate more going forward. So let me explain what this is about. Uh, in 2015, uh, the five-year uh, plan was uh, set up, uh, a basic plan to be exact, a basic plan to be exact uh, to promote gender equality. Uh, was decided by um, cabinet, by a cabinet decision involving the prime minister as well. Uh, first of all, what had to be revisited was a male center way of uh, life, well center way of uh, work that would require long hours and such. And for, uh, secondly, uh, to make sure that 30% of uh, leadership positions are uh, counted for by uh, women. women uh, in 2020, uh, that is. But uh, right now, prospects are not too uh, bright. It, although prospects are not too bright, uh, we encourage uh, companies uh, to uh, promote, hire and promote women. 
and to make sure that the talent grows to leadership positions. So the first step is to promote women to managerial positions so they eventually they will re reach general manager position. So there will be a pipeline of women uh, in leadership positions with a specific numerical uh, targets as well. Let's go to the next uh, slide. This is an overview of uh, laws, of a law that seeks to promote um, women's position or activities in professional life. Uh, this is a main driver of, of, this, uh, of this policy. This was uh, prom promulgated in August of last year and enacted uh, this I enacted uh, this year. Uh, let me, uh, in April of this year, let me tell you what this law is about. Uh, this uh, encourages not just the national government, but local governments as well, for companies uh, with, more than, with more than 300 employees are encouraged to analyze um, how engaged the women are in their workplace to set up an action plan and to publicize uh, that uh, initiative and also to report on results as well. We would like uh, companies to actually, uh, as an obligation, to report back on numbers. Uh, currently, in the private sector, 99.5% of companies in the private sector have signed up on the code of uh, action, action plan, uh, in which began in April of this year. The Minister of Health has a website uh, which shows all the uh, action plans uh, committed to by the uh, private sector uh, companies. In, on the prefectural level, the local governments must uh, revisit how women are promoted, hired and promoted, and provide guidance as to uh, companies in the region. So there has to be a plan as well for that p purpose. And as I mentioned, we the website by the Ministry of Health uh, called Mieruka site or visibility site for women uh, promotion. Uh, this was uh, launched in February of uh, this year. And there's a similar website run by the Cabinet Office as well. It's this one right here. This website is run by the Cabinet Office. I will not uh, go over all the details, but the website shows uh, details like this. My personal expectation is that uh, we've only be just begun. We're only at the beginning of this endeavor. There are some companies with very fine detail. There are others with only a rough plan. So we would like to make sure that because this is all disclosed and we leave it up to uh, the companies, uh, we would like to encourage the local governments uh, to make use of this uh, to, for example, uh, employ a scoring uh, system for uh, companies. And so students who are looking for jobs would look at the scores in terms of gender participation, gender equality, and may decide to uh, look for a job or not in a particular uh, company, at a particular company. So that would indeed, did, that, would undecide, that would decidedly put pressure on the uh, companies as well. Uh, there are investment funds that are dependent on uh, gender participation. For example, na the Nadeshko Fund for uh, management, fund management as well, the scoring system uh, can be, the scores can be used. This is what we call mieruka, vis visualization or making uh, women promotion participation more visible so that companies are serious, become serious about uh, how they engage uh, women. And the overarching law, law, as I said, is the uh, basic law promoting uh, women our participation, female participation. For uh, companies which are proactive, we have uh, different stars, one star, two stars, three stars. We call the stars elboshi. The stars would show how active, proactive the, the companies are in terms of uh, women engagement. It's a certification of sort so that uh, 
for for a government procurement uh, project, so we don't just look at the price, but we look at the overall uh, score uh, of that about that uh, company. And one of the scores uh, that is considered is women engagement. There's a score uh, that uh, rates companies based on how engage how they engage women. And is a government. It affects government procurement as well. This has a budget of five trillion yen on a national uh, level, and there are not just uh, gov national government, but there are other government-related uh, uh, organizations. And we also seek the support of local governments, municipalities as well. This is about uh, the number of uh, rate of women. Uh, board uh, members, which must be a part of the uh, securities uh, report, and this is also disclosed on site as well. On the share, on the in the negotiable uh, securities uh, report, uh, we also need to change the way we work. Uh, long hours would uh, prevent uh, women uh, from participating in the labor market because of several uh, constraints. They must only they can only work as a part-time worker, as a uh, as a as a temp worker, and whatever their style, they must be treated uh, with fairness. Uh, their way of working is not always ideal, and they may just simply be uh, working as an informal uh, worker as well. The decision should not be about a choice between a work or child care. It should be a choice. The choice should be choosing both uh, child care and work, and allowing that uh, would uh, create, help to create a sustainable uh, society. It's a government initiative to change the way we work, and we have plans to announce a large policy, a major policy uh, to this end in March of uh, next year. And I, as a responsible minister, I'm involved in this. There are nine agenda items uh, for this uh, reform of uh, life work style change. I apologize again, it's all in Japanese. One is to uh, improve um, working conditions uh, for non formal uh, employment, for example, uh, same wages for the same work. Secondly, there was an unfortunate, very, very tragic incident where a young uh, female employee at a major advertisement agency committed suicide, uh, partly due to overwork. Uh, so we would like uh, to uh, improve, uh, make improvements in the way we work. In order to support uh, improvements, for example, child care facilities would be important for working uh, parents. Unfortunately, in Japan, there are not enough uh, child care facilities, particularly in populous regions like uh, Tokyo. Uh, child care facilities are inadequate in number in populous regions in urban centers like uh, Tokyo. It is important, pertinent, uh, rather, uh, the improvements have been made at, at a rather accelerated pace to set up to build child care facilities, but far from uh, adequate. And another issue is we don't have enough uh, child uh, caregivers uh, in order to improve working conditions for uh, caregivers, uh, nursery, daycare uh, teachers. Uh, we plan to uh, request a budget for that for the next uh, term. I mentioned that child care leaves are very uh, influential, are important. Efforts are being made to uh, increase the, uh, the benefit, the child care benefit that's been uh, provided uh, before the employee goes on leave. That was currently, that was previously 50%. Now the plan is to go up to 67%. Uh, the benefit uh, was uh, tax exempt, so essentially it's 80%. It would be 80%. Uh, more than 80% of women uh, get the benefit. And by the way, this benefit system is not limited to women. It's also open to men as well. For six months, uh, child care benefits will be provided to both men and women, six months each. In, a, in total, if the husband takes six months and the wife takes six months, it will be a full year of child care benefits. 80% uh, of what their wages were, what their salary was before leave. 
and we would like uh, both parents uh, to uh, benefit from this uh, system, but unfortunately only 2.65% of husbands uh, benefit from this uh, system. I won't say six months, maybe if even a few days. I, I encourage uh, fathers uh, to, husbands uh, to uh, take advantage of this uh, system. So there are companies uh, which are very proactive about uh, gender equality, and the government tries to recognize that. And there has to be a buy-in uh, from uh, top uh, management, and there has to be sustained will on part of the uh, company companies uh, to do so. And fortunately, most of the um, leadership, company leadership, are men. So we gather, as you see, a lot of uh, men uh, to commit, uh, to vocally uh, commit uh, to uh, engaging with uh, women, and about 130 uh, companies have uh, committed to this declaration, not just uh, in the urban centers, but there are similar uh, commitments, uh, endeavors in local uh, municipalities as well. And I now mention WOW, the World Assembly for Women, which women, which will begin uh, tomorrow. For And if any of you are interested, I encourage you very much uh, to attend. Initiatives uh, in Japan are just still are just starting. Uh, compared to uh, many of the countries represented here, Japan is yet to achieve a high level. But I would like to note that there's been acceleration on, in recent uh, years. There's been a boost uh, to efforts, and in order to make this uh, more, uh, to make this a certain, uh, to make to ensure that this continues in a sure way. Uh, Government will spearhead efforts uh, to change the way we all work, both men and women, uh, so that uh, Japan will thrive uh, and develop. And to that end, uh, we ask all of you uh, for your uh, support. And with that is my uh, presentation on latest uh, initiatives uh, undertaken by Japan. Thank you very much for this opportunity.